Hello, my geometry students. We are nearing the end of the unit. Um, today is the last day of new notes. It is lesson 310, which is entitled CPCTC and beyond, because there can be steps beyond saying that the corresponding parts are congruent. So first thing, as a little reminder, if you're going to use this, you need to know what it stands for. The first C is not congruent. The first C is corresponding. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And then are congruent. So it's kind of those main words, C, P, C, T, and C right there. All right. So we can use this to prove that segments or angles of congruent triangles are congruent. So here, when it says working backwards, some commonly used steps. What you're going to see in the today's proofs, there are a mix. Some of the final steps will just say, hey, prove that these segments are congruent. And that's where we would use CPCTC. If you see a final step saying prove that something is a midpoint or prove it's an isosceles triangle, that's where we'd have to go one step further. So for these ones, you have to think, what would midpoint typically imply? Well, midpoint would imply two congruent segments. So when working backwards, you're going to first have to show two congruent segments, and then you'd be able to conclude that, all right, well, that means this is a midpoint. Now, of course, not just any two congruent segments. It depends where they are in the diagram, but in general. As for angle bisector, same type of thing. You'd have to show two congruent angles to then be able to conclude that you have an angle bisector. And then isosceles, two different ways you could show it. If we can show two congruent segments, or you can say it as sides, either one is perfectly fine. Um, and then two congruent base angles. Those you can conclude isosceles triangle from. So there's three in our packet for today. When you look, the first one is just proving a pair of segments, but the next two, we're gonna prove that something is a midpoint and that something is an angle bisector. So the first one kind of primes you for the next two. Um, so let's take a look at this first one together here. So give yourself a little T chart where we've got statements on the left, reasons on the right, or just S and R works just fine, All right? Even though we're not proving that we have a midpoint or angle bisector just yet, we're still proving segments, which means I wanna know that those are segments of like which triangle here. So when I look, you're trying to prove segment AC, that's this whole thing here is congruent to segment EC. All right, this one's a little different. Um, the fact that you're trying to prove those big old segments could be that we maybe need to know that this triangle's isosceles, that would be a possibility here. Um, and where that could come from, it could come from the fact that if we can get these little triangles congruent, that would give us those base angles, and then we could lead to isosceles. So lots of different things going on. So off to the side, I'm going to write it as possible goals, right? We might need to get those little triangles congruent. So ABF congruent to triangle EDF so that we can kind of work towards isosceles. All right, so that's my goal, based on just what we're trying to conclude in the end. Right. Uh, with that being said, let's see where the givens take us. So F is the midpoint of segment A, E, and given. And you know my rule, you can put the givens together. I like to split them up just because I like to use whatever vocab's being given before I move on from it, All right? In this case, my vocab term, I've got midpoint right here. So that means step two, I'm gonna talk about that midpoint. So over here, I'm gonna say that midpoint implies two congruent segments. So look in that picture and let's see what midpoint or what segments that'll give us. So F is the midpoint of AE. So here would be my two congruent segments, A, F, and F, E. All right. 
there we go. All right. We've said what we can from there. So that would possibly be a pair of sides in that little triangles that I was thinking about. So I'm just going to mark that there. All right. The other givens, the next two are just handing us some information. We've got angle one congruent to angle two in the picture. Let's mark that. So that would be a pair of angles in the triangles that I was looking at. And then BF and FD. So BF is this guy. FD is that guy. That's a pair of sides in those triangles. So that is a pretty good guess that it's going to work out for us here. So we have that those are given. All right, before I can say that I have congruent triangles, I need three pieces. So if I look at just one of those triangles, I'm going to cover one of them up. Within this little triangle here, I've got a side, another side, and then the angle that joins in between them. So that's a perfect case of side angle side right there. So I'm going to be able to say that the triangles are congruent using SAS here. So I can use my little triangle ABF congruent to triangle EDF. And so that hits our, our goal right there. All right. If we want to work our way out to saying that side AC is congruent to side EC, we need to state that this thing is isosceles first. So before we can do that, let's use the base angles of the big triangle here to get there. So we can say that angle A is congruent to angle E because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? Or if you prefer it, you can write it as congruent triangles implies that the corresponding parts are congruent. So if you'd rather stick with that implication notation, that's your other way that you can say that right there. Okay, we've said that angle A, this one right here, and angle E are congruent. That's going to make this big triangle then isosceles. That gives me reason to state that. So when you look up at the top of the page, whoo, right here, two congruent base angles means that I have an isosceles triangle. So let's state it. So for number six, we can say that two congruent base angles implies we have an isosceles triangle. All right, well, which triangle is isosceles? That would be the big triangle ACE. So triangle ACE is isosceles. And now if you can list it, list the base. So the base in this case would be base AE. Mm -hmm. Okay, down to our last step. So we're going to prove that AC is congruent to EC now. And it's not by CPCTC. CPCTC got used back up here. This is because an isosceles triangle, this right here is what we're going to use down here. We can say an isosceles triangle implies that we have two congruent sides. And there we go. That finishes our proof right there. I like that one. It's a little different. So this is what we're saying is you have to be able to use the basics and then kind of extend beyond it a bit. All right, on to the next page. You have two more. Like we said, we've got a midpoint that we're going to be concluding. So we're going to need this step right here. Two congruent segments will prove we have a midpoint. The second one, we've got GE bisects angle FE. So to show an angle bisector, we're going to have to show two congruent angles here. All right, so keep that in mind. You do not have a little T-chart so you can set that up for yourself. I do think it's kind of helpful just to keep things nice and neat. All right, let's get it started. So with this first one, make sure you can see everything here. We've got that AB is perpendicular to EC. And because reason two is also perpendicular, I'm gonna put that in there with it. DE is perpendicular to EC. All of that is given to us. So let's mark it in the picture. A, B, and E. That's kind of, oh, an A, C. Oops, I realized I wrote that wrong. Maybe my eyes jumped. A, B, and A, C. There we go. All right, and then D, E, and E, C. Here we are. Okay. Perpendicular is our vocab term. So I know that I love to use my little highlighter to show it. You don't have to, but you need to be making that connection there. Whatever your vocab is, run with it. So perpendicular gives us right 
angles. So over here, I have to say something is a right angle. So in the picture, very nicely, we have angle A and angle E are right angles. Okay, right angles always leaves us with two options from here. So the fact that we've said we've got right angles here means that down here, I need to either say that right angles is going to give me right triangles or it's going to give me congruent angles. So it kind of depends where I want to go with this. When I'm looking at this particular proof, what I want to think about is the fact that to be able to get any of this, if I'm staring at two different triangles, my goal is going to be to get the triangle on the left, so ABC, congruent to the triangle on the right, EDC. And then if I want to say that C is going to be the midpoint, I'm going to have to know that those two segments are congruent. My goal is going to then be to get AC congruent to EC. Now, how I get there, I don't know. Could it be hypotenuse leg? Could it be side angle side? I'm not sure. So I'm going to take my chances. And I'm going to leave this open for a minute. I'm going to come back to this guy. Mm -hmm. We've said in the past, your options are just to write everything down and cover your bases. That's fine too. But since we did that before, let's change it up this time. So for number four here, um, let's keep moving. So we've got that BC is congruent to DC. Mark that in your picture. So BC is congruent to DC right there. And because there's no vocab, let's go ahead and put the next given right in there with it. AB is congruent to DE. All right, AB, this one is congruent to DE. All right. So let's think about what would be more helpful here. Do I need it to be a pair of congruent angles or do I need it to be right triangles? Well, if I focus on just one triangle here, kind of cover things up, if I use it as a pair of congruent angles, what I'm going to have is angle side side because the angle is in between and I can't use that. So HL really is a special case of angle side side, which means my step three needs to be talking about I've got right triangles. So now I know how to fill it in. Right angles is going to imply that I have right triangles. So over here, I want to say that triangle ABC and triangle EDC are right triangles. All right, that's kind of that key step so that BC and DC are now the hypotenuse and AB and DE are the leg. All right, we have enough to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC by HL. So there's kind of my first little goal done. And then from there, if I want to show that C is the midpoint of this segment, I've got to state that those two segments are congruent. So step six is we're going to use the fact that we know the triangles are congruent to prove that segment AC is congruent to segment EC by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And then finally, now we've hit that little goal step, we can go to our proof step. We can say that if those two segments are congruent, it must mean that C is the midpoint of AE because two congruent segments implies that we have a midpoint. Right. So it definitely looks a little different. It kind of seems backwards there. We're used to saying midpoint implies the two congruent segments. But in this case, it's the fact that these two congruent segments support this little piece of it right here. That's the connector. All right. With that being said, let's start the next one and maybe we'll finish it in class or have you guys even finish it and then we can go over in class. So give yourself the statements and the reasons. And then let's set up a goal. I have a bad habit of sometimes just jumping right into the proof. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. Um, so they're going to give you some congruent segments, which is great. But in the end, you want to prove that GE bisects angle FEH. So GE, we want to show bisects angle FEH. All right. You have two goals here. To be able to say that that's an angle bisector, you have to get 
those two angles congruent. And to get those angles congruent, you're going to have to get the triangles themselves congruent. So your goals here is I really need to show that the triangle on the left, so I'm going to call that GFE, has to be congruent to the triangle on the right, triangle GHE, so that then you can show that these two little angles are the same. So you can put numbers in there in column one and two, and that would be fine. Um, just don't confuse yourself. We're not saying they're congruent. So maybe just to be safe, I'll just use the letters so that I don't have to label anything. And this would be angle um, FEG congruent to angle HEG. So not givens. These are my goals so that I can then finish with this guy here. Okay. If you're feeling confident, maybe take a stab at it. Otherwise, We'll save this. I'm going to save for a little recap at the start of class tomorrow. And with that, don't forget to go answer the post video question. Thanks for watching.